a very average exotic in Destiny 1, the insurmountable Skullfort has made a return in Destiny 2. It would be easy to assume that D2 Skullfort is equally as average as it once was, and if anything, probably below average since the D2 version of the Skullfort doesn't feature the two melee charges as the D1 Skullfort did. And if you did compare the D1 and D2 versions of the Skullfort, pound for pound the newer version is probably weaker. Despite being weaker, the power of the Skullfort has completely shot up due to changes in the Striker Titan skill tree, easily making the Skullfort one of the best Titan exotics in Destiny 2. Before we get into the subclass, let's check out the perks on the Skullfort. The Transfusion Matrix perk on the Skullfort grants health regeneration from arc melee kills, and will restore your melee energy on a kill. So in short, if you kill something with a charged melee attack, you will heal yourself and get your melee charge back. Not a terrible exotic perk, but it will struggle in some environments. For example, if you punch something that's way too strong, you will consume your melee charge and the exotic perk will remain useless until you've recharged your melee attack. Against weaker mobs, the Skullfort really shines, since it will constantly heal you and give your melee charge back. The question will be, which striker skill tree will we use? For me there is a clear answer, but let's just consider Code of the Juggernaut first. The reversal perk which grants health on melee kills is good, but it does kind of overlap with the exotic perk on the Skullfort. Not the biggest deal, but it is a bit wasteful. Also Knockout has some utility with the Skullfort, but again, it seems quite situational and not ideal in the long run. By far the most powerful and complementary skill tree for the Skullfort is the Code of the Earthshaker. Nearly all the perks work well in tandem with the exotic, and you'll see the insane amounts of damage you can put out if you use this helmet correctly. Looking at each of the perks in this skill tree, we have Seismic Strike, which pretty much acts like Shoulder Charge from Destiny 1, except it also creates an arc explosion on a hit. That's already decent, and with the Skullfort, killing something with your Shoulder Charge will completely recharge your Shoulder Charge. A good start, but the Aftershocks perk is what makes this build so much better. Damaging enemies with your Seismic Strike recharges your grenade. So we now have a melee ability that cools down our grenade and will cool down itself completely on a kill. How much grenade energy do you get back from a Seismic Strike? About 25% of your grenade charge. Did I also mention that Seismic Strike has an arc explosion on a hit? Hitting multiple enemies with a Seismic Strike explosion will further cool down your grenade 25% per enemy. So a pack of low to mid tier enemies will pretty much fully recharge your grenade. Crazy, but we're not done yet. Magnitude gives you two grenade charges and increases the duration. Two grenade charges means you won't be wasting much of your Aftershock's energy and the extended duration is also quite nice. The final perk Terminal Velocity isn't really tied into any of the aforementioned perks or abilities, but it's still great nonetheless. Okay, it's clear that the choice of what grenade you use will have huge significance, since the class is being built completely around it. In case you're unaware, pulse grenades are incredibly strong right now. Completely opposite to how they were in Destiny 1, but dropping a pulse grenade under an ultra, a major, or just adds in general, deals ridiculous amounts of damage. With the Skullfort, you are getting the means to cool in this crazy strong grenade in seconds, with the added bonus of having two of them with a longer duration. Alright, we've got the build, now where to unleash this onslaught. Crucible is probably not going to be the best. Since Seismic Strike doesn't kill unless the target is already weakened, you're going to find it hard to refresh your melee charge. Pulse grenades are still very strong in the Crucible if you place them correctly, but I'd still say there are better Titan exotics suited to the Crucible, like the Syntheseps. So let's move over to PvE, and my god, the amount of damage you can deal with this build. Most low to mid tier enemies like to bundle up and give you chunks of grenade energy back, with the added bonus of completely giving your melee charge back. Try this build in Strikes, Patrols, and absolutely the Leviathan Raid. The kind of damage pulse grenades deal in the Beast Garden is hilarious. Plus having two pulse grenade charges deal a solid portion of damage against Kallus too. Give this build a go, drop pulse grenades under large targets, and get them back quickly by shoulder charging lower tiered enemies. Thanks for watching guys.